Good evening. Welcome home. My name is Daniel Brower. I use any pronouns and I am the associate pastor here at First Christian Church of Decatur. Welcome to our 601, well, uh, 605 uh, check-in and meditation. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, as you might be aware, technology isn't really my best friend, so it took me a minute to get online. So I came with a plan this week, you can tell, because I didn't talk about the weather. So last week, I we talked about, or I talked about, and y'all listen to me later on your screens, we talked about some some fairly existential questions, right? Why are we here? What is the point of this place? Who do we want to be? What do we want to become? Which are great questions to think about, not only now at this time in the life of the church, but also as an ongoing exercise to keep us on track. Several of y'all have already had incredible thoughts on this, and I am so excited to con continue to discern this with y'all. So here's another question along that same vein that I kind of wanted to touch on a little bit. Who are we here for? As a church, as a congregation, as a body of faith, who are we here for? So here's a situation that I encounter a lot as a chaplain. I go to visit a unit, I go to the commander, and I say, hey, sir, would your soldiers like to have a religious service this weekend? And the commander will say, hey, chaplain, you can have a service if you want to. We don't mind. That's fine. Look, man, I don't come up here and prepare a whole worship service for my health. My job, religious support, including any worship service that we may or may not have, is for the care and well-being of the soldier. Now, do I like it when people come to my chapel services? Absolutely, I do. It's awesome. But that's not the purpose of the chapel service. They're not for me. It's not a performance for me to put on my cool little show and show off how smart I am. It's for the soldiers to come and nurture their spiritual growth and well-being. To take time out of their hectic schedule and sit with God for just a moment. Now, I figured that this sort of encounter was pretty much a military phenomenon. It's probably a side effect of being a martial institution rather than a religious institution. But here's the funny thing. Um, the conversation that I have with commanders all the time, I've had that same conversation at least twice this week here. So this week, we hired our brand new office administrator, Tanya Demyanik. She usually sits right here where I am. She is incredible, y'all. I am so grateful to have her. And because she is now doing the day-to-day at-the-church desk stuff, I've been more able to do the day-to-day -day pastor stuff and call people and reach out to talk to folks throughout the week. And I've had a couple of conversations that go like, oh, you know, we've just been so busy or sick or traveling or, you know, fill in the blank. I'm sorry we haven't been at church, but you'll see us back soon. I, I promise we'll be back, which, great. Please come back to church. Absolutely. Do I like it when people come to worship on Sunday? Absolutely, I do. Please, everybody watching this, come to church on Sunday. But is that the point of why we show up? Do we come to church so that the pastor sees us and is like, all right, great, box check. I'm getting a good grade in church. Do we come to service on Sunday so that I or anybody really can look around at the pews and go, dang, our numbers are great today. Who do we show up for? Who are we here for? It's not me. It shouldn't be me. I hope it's not me. 
or at least not me alone. I have a feeling that if I was to ask this question of folks in the church, the answer I would get would be, we're here for community. We use the word community around here a lot. What does that mean? What do we mean when we say community, First Christian Decatur? Now, this is not a new question. It's even asked in the scriptures, although it's in slightly a different way. Someone once came to Jesus and said, who is my neighbor? And Jesus told him the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, if you're not familiar with the parable of the Good Samaritan, long story short, there was a man traveling. He was robbed and beaten and left for dead. And he is passed by on the road by all of these fine, upstanding members of society, religious leaders, people who should have helped him. But the only one who stops to help this guy is part of a class of people that was despised in Jesus' day. Now, Jesus said, who was the neighbor to the wounded man? And the fellow that asked the question couldn't even bear to say Samaritan. He just said, the one who showed him kindness. The one that no one would ever want to associate with on a good day. His actions, not his nationality or race or tradition or any of the stuff we say in the welcome statement, you know, physical or mental ability, economic circumstance, none of all, none of that made him a neighbor. What made him a neighbor to the injured man was his actions of love and kindness. So when Jesus says, love your neighbor, anyone can be a neighbor. So who are our neighbors? What is community? Who are we here for? Why are we here? Who do we want to be? And who do we want to become? These are not questions with easy answers. These are not questions with fast answers. This is not something that we can pray about overnight. And when the morning comes, we're like, got it. And we don't have to ask this question ever again because that was uncomfortable. Anyway, these are questions that we are going to wrestle with for a long time. Hopefully, if we're faithful the rest of our lives. They're not simple. But they're worth asking. And it's worth exploring this stuff together. Because my answers might be different than your answers, and all together we can come up with a community answer. We go together. I said a couple Sundays ago, we don't grow together if we don't go together. So let's ask these questions and answer them together. I'd love you to walk beside us as we try to answer these. If you'd like to come and walk alongside us, there are so many opportunities to get involved right now, especially during the holiday season. And at this church, there's something for everyone. If you want, hypothetically, if you want to be challenged intellectually and really engage your mind, might I recommend Stan Saunders Sunday School Seminar. Say that three times fast. But our Sunday school class in the Pathfinders room at 915 on Sunday mornings, they are they are doing some great stuff in there. It's really cool. Um, if you want to be involved in worship and share in spiritual experience that's a little bit more traditional in that someone's going to stand up and, and preach and then we sing songs and that sort of thing, Sunday service is at 1025. 
And if you're really not about the church thing and you just kind of want to do something with your hands, have I got the opportunity for you? Because this Sunday, our Christmas trees are arriving. We've gotten the lot all set up. Russell and them have done a fabulous job all month of getting the lot all ready for the trees. And they're going to be here Sunday at 12 p.m. We have over a thousand trees, so we're going to need all hands on deck to unload them. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, but I can't carry a tree, that's okay. That's okay. We want you there anyway, not only to build relationship, but also there's a ton of stuff to do that doesn't involve carrying a tree. We really do need all hands on deck. So please make plans to join with join in with us Sunday at 12. I've even, I've even heard a rumor that Santa might show up. You have to show up and see. I look forward to seeing you there. But at the end of the day, whether I see you, whenever I see you, just know this. God made you special. God loves you very much. And so do I. Have a good night. I hate Facebook Live. <laughs>